Right now, this morning, we're going to talk about uh, the American Association of University Women annual used book sale and some other things going on. And we've got uh, Pat Rice is with us this morning and Kathy Larson. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Hey, with a beautiful day like this, why can't we be good? <laughs> <laughs> it is great. It's hard to believe it's time again for another book sale. I know. I the know. year went by quick, didn't it? <laughs> it did. <laughs> We always have books on our mind, however, because through the year sure. you get a call, can I give you my books now? Because we do have a storage area, so we, we are able to do that during the year, too. But uh, it's we, it's a good way. I like recycling, and it's a good way to recycle. How long has this annual event been going on now? You know, we tried to trace it back, and the earliest one I could find in our records was like 1971, but either the late 60s or early 70s was the first one. And but we sat at the old library. One time we had one where Corbin's Law Office is. Oh, sure. We had just different locations in town, and um, but we've been at the mall for, I think, more than 10 years. And uh, what was the whole point of this sale for originally? Well, and basically, maybe it's, still is. yeah, it's, it's our one fundraiser that we do. And originally, I think it was just to make money. We've always given scholarships. We've done community projects. More recently, um, we've started a project where every kid that enters kindergarten gets a brand new book. And along with the Education Association in Faribault, uh, we fund that, and that's been an ongoing thing. We also last year funded three scholarships for women, uh, and we funded one also at the uh, Technical College. That's got to be pretty exciting for those kids that yeah, you know, you know it's and get a brand new book. I think people said they do it when they go through the screening, the preschool screening, okay. and some of the kids, it's obvious they have never had their own book, and we buy mm. a, a good book, um, sure, a good hardcover book, so um, they they receive something that's their own. And this event, uh, you've been collecting books already uh, at the mall since uh, uh, since April sixth, but uh, the actual book sale gets underway next week. Next Thursday. Uh, we'll open at Thursday at 10 a.m. and we're pretty much open mall hours through Sunday and then we're o also going to be open Monday and Tuesday from 3 to 7. And uh, where exactly in the mall are you? Well, it's the old place where Lacan's Marine had their boat stored. Oh, okay. It's kind of in the central part of the mall. Sure. It's a nice big location. The same location as last year. Okay, so nice, who came last nice year. easy spot to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, You've got all different kinds of books, all kinds of genres you're going to be... Yes, we have uh, anything from children's books to adult books, uh, any subject you can think of. Um, <laughs> amazingly, people come in and they're looking maybe for a childhood book that they haven't ha you know, seen for sure. ages, and it's really a wonderful time to uh, pick up something that you know, you've been thinking about, and of course the price is so reasonable, and we have uh, some bags that we printed out that if you purchase one of those for two dollars you get a reduced rate for a whole bag of books so well, that's a pretty know, good deal then really wonderful yes and then on kids day um, which will be on saturday from 10 to 2 it's called kids carnival we've kind of um, uh, uh, matched up with um, karen hoffman's you know children's world and they're going to have all kinds of activities for children at that time. And we have a fishing pond, fish pond. The kids get a chance to wow. get a little free prize. Sure. And we also have an area where some of our members will help children make bookmarks and you know get to select a free book and all kinds of neat things you know to encourage reading and to just um, stimulate the idea that it's important to you know recycle and also purchase things so it'll make a it'll make a great fun day for both the adults and the kids that day so yeah we get we get hordes of people that come every year you know like a bookstore romance and mystery are probably our top sellers i'm sure yeah. i mean that's what sells and biographies <laughs> um but we gotta just, it's it's interesting we can't create enough categories in some ways to put the books out because we do have we try to put them in in groupings uh some people want them alphabetized by author or whatever we, we can't quite do that but We'll have more. We'll have more about uh, the book sale, and also we're going to be talking about the 90th anniversary of AAUW coming up in our next segment. Oh, no. We're talking about the the American Association of University uh, Women annual used book sale. It's coming up at uh, the Faribault West Mall. That will be running April 23rd through the 28th. And Pat Rice and Kathy Larson are both here this morning. And uh, why don't you run down uh, the times on that next week? Yeah, well, we open up Thursday morning at 10 a.m., so it's from 10 to 8 
on Thursday and Friday. And then on Saturday, it's mall hours, which are 10 to 5. Then on Sunday, where we start our, our bag day, where you get a whole bag of books for, I believe it's $8. Um, that sounds like a great deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. And as much as you can get in a paper bag, and uh, that starts on Sunday. And then we're open on Monday and Tuesday evening from 3 to 7 for people who maybe were gone for the weekend or whatever or want to have those last books that they pick up. I, I think it's such a good opportunity because we sell the books at a very reasonable price. And so people, for $20, you can get more books than you can read in a year. And you're still, are you still accepting books up until the day the sale starts? Or? Yep, people bring them in even at the sale. They'll oh, bring okay. in a box and buy a box. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, I guess. No, I think a lot of people just want to recycle them again and put them back out, and uh, we are glad mm -hmm. for that. And now, there are certain books that you don't want, correct? Yeah, we, we, we've asked not for people not to bring textbooks, encyclopedias, or uh, reference books. Some of them are fine, but sometimes we, we get some things that are so old sure. that we toss them, especially like medical reference things. You really, we don't want to sell those because the information will be really outdated. Sure. And so we do try to do some culling. Uh, we, I think we've been really fortunate though. We said last year we really got books that, that even smelled good. Sometimes you get a box of books and you said, ah, we're just going to toss the whole box. But I think people have been really good about bringing things in that are really in good condition still. And uh, what what do you do with the funds that are raised uh, with this event? Uh, again, we'll be sponsoring some scholarships. We try to we use them to sponsor as many as we can, depending upon the monies that we earn and then the books that we buy. We've also done some other programs in Faribault from time to time uh, where we've had to pay for the program itself and we invite the community. And I would say that anybody is welcome to come to any of our meetings. We had one recently that was on um, sexual abuse and women in the military and we had community people come and they're always welcome to come to our meetings. We meet at the third Monday of the month at the hospital, the basement of the hospital, and there are meeting rooms there. And so we, the goal is to try to provide educational programs, plus there are many other things that we've been involved in <laughs> since our history. Have you, uh, have you got a pretty good size group of members yet? Well, at this point we have yeah. 42 members, and okay. uh, hopefully growing. Um, <clears throat> our actual date that we were organized was February 25th, to, uh, uh, 1925, which means that this year it's a ni our 90th anniversary, which we're very That's proud great. of. And uh, we plan to hold a big celebration Monday, May 18th, at our annual potluck <laughs> picnic. And uh, doing some research, somebody found out that it, our picnic started in 1936, so that's a tradition also for us. And we are going to meet at the Hutchinson House, and uh, we thought this was appropriate since our first mem first president of the group was Ellie Hutchinson, uh, even though uh, her family did not live sure. in the historical house. The name, of course, was the same, and uh, her husband was a relative of the Hutchinson family, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, some of the I know that uh, Pat has mentioned some of the wonderful things that have been happening. Uh, in 1959, our group uh, established the Friends of the Library to promote literacy, you know, for fundraising or volunteering programs. And we also um, donate a book every year or, or a DVD or a video. Okay. Um, and the, um, we have uh, the free press that we subscribe for the library, so that's one of our big accomplishments, I think. Um, and uh, who, who's eligible to join this group if they're interested? Well, right now, uh, to join, all you need is a two-year degree or more advanced degree from an accredited institution, and uh, that's currently our membership. So we welcome, you know, of course, we are always looking for new, uh, dedicated members, and it's really great because there's such camaraderie, and with the other women, and of course we know we are working for worthwhile uh, projects like Pat mentioned with our scholarships. We've given many, many of those out through the years. In fact, we started that in 70, uh, let me look here, um, in 79 we presented the first of many, many scholarships. And uh, we, we are really part of a national organization. We just had our state conference last weekend, but AAUW for years 
they have a huge endowment and it's probably the leading uh, group that the president would go to to ask for advice on women's issues. In fact, Eleanor Roosevelt worked very closely with the AUW oh, during okay, her sure. time. And uh, I think because they've always promoted education, and we give to both state and national scholarships too. And many of them are women getting their PhDs where there's not money available for them. Like Sally Ride was an AUW scholar, the astronaut. Um, so there have been many people that have been very influential in the United States who received AUW scholarships over time. And also men are eligible to join. We, we welcome men, <laughs> although our, 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 our goal is promoting things for women and girls. And uh, like a couple years ago, we sponsored a girl to go to St. Olaf, to go to that science camp for girls. Um, and uh, she came back and did a presentation for us, and she was so elated. It was so fun to hear somebody so excited about science. What, t what, type, of uh, what type of students are typically eligible to receive uh, scholarships from your group? Well, we have uh, we give out two scholarships for women who have already completed two years and hopefully going on to further education. And uh, like I said, we've given away many of those the last years. And uh, <clears throat> we also offer a scholarship at the uh, South Central College, and that's to you know a recent graduate. And uh, <clears throat> just to give people, or especially women, a chance to advance, you know, through. Um, advocacy, education, and research. Well, and the money isn't great. I mean, it's like $1,000 or 750 or 500 But still, every little year. bit helps. You know? I think that in talking to some of the women who received them, they said, I can't tell you what it felt like to have somebody else have confidence in me. And so even though the scholarships may not be huge, it might pay for the books for the quarter or something. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's that that feeling that somebody else cares about you. It's just a thousand dollars or whatever less that they have to take out a loan on and that you don't have to pay <laughs> back later. Yeah. You know? And we've all, we've invested more I'd say in seasoned students rather than recent high sure. school graduates because I think the research shows that if you've got a student who's been in for two years they're, they're the most likely to graduate. That makes sense. I mean I can see that uh, uh, that way you, when you feel like you've got a good investment made in that person and um, I can see you doing that. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. I would like to add sure. a little note here about um, someone who is has been a member in our organization for quite a few years. Uh, she received a scholarship from us, Barb Doubles, and uh, in fact, she was the first scholarship recipient. And she went on to earn her elementary education degree and then her master's degree. She taught here in Fairville for many years, and she also, of course, joined our organization has been a dedicated AEUW member and she's held many offices and leadership roles for the past 33 years. So you can see, like Pat said, that it gives you a sense of confidence. It gives you, you know, that little extra something and we feel that Barb has paid forward. So that's what we'd like to see. Now, of course, uh, when you've got to somebody like a teacher or a doctor, they're always continuing their education because they have to and um, that's always something uh, important too. There are some scholarships at the state level for current uh, women who are in that, those kind of project programs and some of them can get apply for scholarships to maybe do special projects with their students or to go to certain seminars or things that would promote their education and I mean that's the basics basis of our group is promoting promoting education in whatever way we can and we've uh, done things like we really supported Title IX mm -hmm. when that came in. That was a, a big issue in Faribault because there was not equalization at all of the sports in the schools. Uh, there was not, there was the Bruce Smith Award that boys got all the time. There was not a Companion Girls Award. So I bet that ruffled a few feathers. It right? did. <laughs> uh, for example, the locker rooms were way different than the size and now they're pretty much the same. Uh, things like the t new towels would come. Where would they go? the boys. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and, and things like how, what they paid referees or times of things. And um, they didn't have a girls golf team, although the, the golf coach said, oh yeah, girls can join. Well, they were never encouraged. Then they hired a golf co girls golf coach and now they've had a golf team for sure. a long time. Uh, so Title IX nationwide made a big difference and AUW and Fairbo was really a mover and shaker for that. We also started, uh, we've done highway cleanup for over 20 years and started, it was a group called Face Q in town that was interested in the environment. So we've been interested in, in that for a long time and the GROWS group that Gardner's reaching out for service. It started with a couple of our members and the interest in the environment and 
keeping things clean and recycling and everything. So that's been going on for a long time so, uh, as well. So there's been a lot of things that have branched out from your group. <coughs> yeah. That's what you're saying. Like I did not know until this year that we founded the Friends of the Library. We were just going through the uh, Rice County Historical Society records, and it was a group of women. Of course, they were all like Mrs. Lewis Johnson, Mrs. Ralph something, uh, a little more formal back then, but they just saw a need to find a way to support our library in another way, and so they started the Friends of the Library, and uh, Friends has given thousands of dollars to our library over the years. We're talking with Pat Rice and Kathy Larson this morning about the American Association of Us University Women annual used book sale next week. Also, we're talking about some of the history of the uh, AAUW, and uh, uh, what else haven't we touched on yet, either one of you? Well, I think one of the things that uh, we're very proud of is that the Riverbend nature has been such an addition to our community and to the area surrounding, and several of our members, past members, were very instrumental in uh, getting that off the ground, too. Um, very. Um, environmentally alert um, they're because of their reality because of their interest and determination and volunteering many hours that this became a reality and again it was some of the same members or I would say kind of leaders in our group that had that in mind uh, we also do um, March Women's History Month in which um, you know every week during that month a wonderful article is written, and I'm sure you've read some of them mm -hmm. throughout the years, about women in history, because at least when I was going to school, there really wasn't much about women who did things during the years in the history. And so it's just so fun to realize all the things that have been contributed to. And this year we focused it on, focused on the 1920s decade and um, that was just phenomenal to see and to listen and to be able to view what happened during that period of time and how some women were very instrumental in helping the community helping the state uh, getting things going in one of the things that came out of that also for a while we did skits that we performed at the schools on six famous women of history like Rachel Carson, Elizabeth Blackwell, Sacagawea, mm -hmm. so we had uh, some stuff that mm -hmm. we'd go into the schools, and at one point in time also, AEW members would take a piece of artwork and go in, they were called picture ladies, and they would, I don't know what grade it happened in, but they would go in and describe exactly about the artist and the, t the style of painting and the type, and uh, did a program for kids. Well, I think I remember hearing stories uh, when I was going through school about during the times of the of the two world wars, how all the men were gone fighting, and there was a lot of times women had to uh, pick up and carry the ball on a lot of on many things uh, here at home, not just in their own homes, but out in the working world and everything. And and there was a lot of interesting stories and some interesting women that came out of all of that. Okay, I think even Liz Strokas, who has been honored for her flying sure. and stuff in town. I mean, th those women did not get recognized till like the last decade for all their efforts that they put into World War II. And I know she wanted to become a pilot, a commercial pilot. That was not to be because all the men got out that she had taught and the jobs went there. So the women pilots were kind of left to the wayside until more recently when there's been some wonderful efforts to um, appraise the efforts that they had in the war. And now there's such a need for pilots that they've, <laughs> that that they've had to, you know, they've had to yes. do it. So. I think another thing too that we'd like to mention is uh, when, during election years, uh, we've sponsored the candidates forum, and uh, it's so community members could ask, you know, the city, community, and state candidates questions concerning critical issues, and uh, they can do that in person. We usually um, are the ones that organize it, make sure that uh, somebody's there recording or helping conduct it, have the questions. And I think that we played a very vital uh, part in the community for that. There are a lot of things that, uh, projects or programs that we've done throughout the years that sometimes uh, people in our community don't realize because we're kind of the back scene people. Yeah, and scene, yeah. um, So we want to emphasize that, that it, it is something we do for all the people in the community, not just for women, for, you know, children and our complete vast amount of people. We were often confused with being AAU. 
the, the, the sports group. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so people really didn't know that, you know that it was not an athletic group, but it was a women's group. It, and it just it just sounds like you're in you know, like you said, Kathy. You're into so many activities that uh, a lot of people don't know about uh, most of the time because you are kind of behind the scenes in some things. But mm -hmm. it sounds like a lot of these activities wouldn't go very well unless some of your group were involved. I think you're right. Um, I don't know if there be other people who would pick, you know take the ball and go with it because um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of volunteer time, and of course interest and work. In fact, tomorrow we're trying to <laughs> move our books and, you know, as our age advances, we need some young <laughs> muscles to uh, load the boxes of books that we have stored. So, you know, if there's anybody out there who would like to come and help us at 10 o'clock tomorrow, we're moving books from the Congregational Hall out to the mall. So, uh, but you're right. I think that um, there's been a lot of dedicated women who have um, just seen what needs to be done and are very community minded and want to make a difference. And I think we really do make a difference in Fairwall. Is it harder getting some of the younger generations involved? I mean, I, I know I'm in the Knights of Columbus and it's really hard to get younger uh, people involved in it and, and to make a dedication other than joining. I mean, there's times that we need more than just a, a body at a meeting. We need them for other things. And it's hard to get some of the younger people to do that. And I know some of the other service organizations are having the same problem. Is that the case with your group? Yes, it is. Uh, unfortunately, in this uh, day and age, a lot of families, uh, both father and mother work. Uh, they have a lot of other activities, more organized sports for their children. It seems like they're running all the time. And it is really hard. And uh, I think, too, the fact that... Um, the girls today have all of the, so I should, should say, um, the advantages of sports and other opportunities that we have worked so hard for that we did not have in our youth. I think they don't realize how hard we worked for their um, their activities, and it is really difficult. Although we have uh, just recently acquired more younger people, but I just think that shows in any organization. So we're hoping that that trend will kind of turn around as some of the young people realize that we are getting up there in age and, you know, somebody does have to take forward and or take the train and go forward with it. And I think we have to change too. If you look at the more recent research, it says that younger people, they are, they will volunteer just like we do, but they like it on a one-shot basis, a one-shot project. Right. You know, give me that breakfast to run or give me that book sale to run or give me that I will do that but I cannot commit to a meeting every month um, so that's just not the way that young people are as apt to do it so maybe we need to adapt like one thing we have is a book club and well attended and sometimes I think we should start a second one for younger women because that's something that young women will do they, they still are avid readers and like to get together to socialize with some other women and to discuss books that they read it's a real popular thing and I suppose the hard time with, with something like that is finding a time to you know wh what time do you schedule it for because you know <laughs> there's more women obviously working and taking care of their families and then as you said there's uh, things going on in the evenings afterward too so I suppose it still gets to be hard to schedule a time for that thing to happen well if anybody has three little kids and you talk to them and they ask <laughs> about what their week is like it's like why well, do you have time for yourself yeah. I mean it's it's just go 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 and again that's something that I didn't experience in my growing up and just have to look at it with schedules of friends and relatives and stuff that I mean they're just as committed to their families and stuff and would like to do more but there's not always the hours I think uh, here too we could mention that we have done a couple of different things this past two years we've uh, uh, had a group both last year and this year go to the Minnesota History Theater and view uh, a couple of wonderful production one was uh, the uh, the Lonely Soldier about the female military in Iraq and how what their experiences were and that made for good discussion. Uh, this year we went to God Girl which was on Christine Holman's uh, experiences in the ministry okay, divinity sure, yeah. in the early 70s and we also went to something right here in town called the Gallery on the Go where you go and have uh, someone uh, teach you how to paint a beautiful picture and you have refreshments and uh, it was really a fun activity, and of course, like Pat said, it was a one-shot deal, and we could discuss things with uh, younger people. It was kind of a mentor friendship uh, activity, so 
I do think we are leaning towards that that kind of idea. We didn't discuss when we were talking about uh, who is eligible to uh, join. Is is there any cost to joining when someone wants to join the group? Or? Yeah, uh, in joining, you pay both. There's a local, national, and uh, a state dues structure. And I think there's a, a special in the spring that one can join for a lesser amount. Yes, this year, in fact, um, if you are a newly um, new member, uh, you only pay 43.50 for this year way into next year, which is really half of what the membership dues are. But when you break it down, it's quite reasonable for all the things that are done sure. with the money because they go again to scholarships, to funding, and uh, I believe it's like 68.50 or something for um, you know a, a normal. A fee that our, our people pay. Well, I mean, so. you've got to have you've got to have something so that you can have money to take care of your programs, and of course, so you're doing the, the book sale as a fundraiser as well. And is that your main fundraiser of the year? The yeah, book sale? we have we did do this year. Kathy started actually. We did oh. a breakfast at the American Legion oh, okay, around sure. Halloween, so it was kind of fun. People came in some costumes to some extent, and it was just a a fun time to do that. But I think like all groups, you know, we need money to do lots of programs, and sometimes women say, "Oh my gosh, seventy dollars! I can't pay that." I don't know a men's group where they don't pay even more than a hundred, or they yeah. have a lunch fee every week. Sure. Uh, so it's not, uh, you know, you need to I'm invest in yourself and think of something that you're doing for yourself and for other women. We've got just about a minute left if you want to run down uh, the dates sale. and times of the book sale again next week. Yes, the annual uh, book sale, and also we will have some toys and games kinds of thing too. That sometimes those are donated, but it will be Thursday begins Thursday, April 23rd at 10 o'clock in the morning, runs 10 to 8 Thursday, 10 to 8 Friday, 10 to 5 on Saturday, and noon to 5 on Sunday. And that's when the bag sale starts on Sunday, which everybody waits for. Um, and then Monday and Tuesday will be open 3 to 7 in the evening. Um, and we thank everybody, really, who's who donated books. We get just tremendous response, and that's just so heartwarming every year, all the books that we are able to receive and recycle and uh, earn money for community for our community. And if there's some folks that really do indeed want to help you out with moving books tomorrow, who should they contact or where should they go? Show up. Uh, just if they come to the Congo, the Congregational Church Out Building at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll be moving from then. Or if anybody wants to come out to the mall um, from, we'll start so a Monday through Wednesday, we'll be sorting books all day long. Um, putting them together and if somebody has the inkling to come out and help us sort books I will sure give them a free book if they come. Sounds great. <laughs> Could I add one more sure, thing? On, on Saturday the kids carnival runs from 10 to 2. We'll have a fish pond with little prizes and the kids can make bookmarks and receive a book. Nice. Great, please come. Great great. Family. Pat Rice, Kathy Larson from AAUW here in Faribault and uh, the, um, the American Association of University Women Annual Book Sale coming up next week. February or April 23rd through the 28th at the Faribault West Mall.